my channel. For a long time now, I've been fascinated with the ancient Egyptians, the culture, history and religion. But most of all, I've been intrigued with just how they moved huge stones that were used to construct their monuments. There are hundreds of theories out there, many tested with experimental archaeology. And as you can see, I too love to test out my theories with models and experiments. A lot of my spare time is spent designing and building them. And today's talk is called Petrie's Rockers, a wheel within a wheel. Petrie's Rockers make up part of a collection of artefacts that were found in 1895, buried as foundation deposits in Hatshepsut Temple at Deir el Bahrain. They were found covered in a pit hewn out of the rock. The pit also contained models of building tools and farming equipment. Petrie theorised the rockers had been used as an aid in pyramid construction to raise the blocks with a side-to-side -side rock emotion, hence the name Petrie's Rockers. In this talk I will attempt to show you a connection between the rockers and the artefacts, a connection that points to a new method of transportation hitherto unknown. Wheels within wheels is a common saying when referring to something that's complicated and difficult to understand. When making a political argument, like the Brexit backstop for instance, you'd never really know what's going on. In fact the saying, a wheel within a wheel, is a piece of text taken from the book of the prophet Ezekiel, from the Bible's Old Testament. He was a priest living in Jerusalem during the first Babylonian attack on the city. He was taken prisoner and held captive and exiled around 597 BC. Now, Five years into his captivity he was sitting on the banks of an irrig irrigation canal near his refugee camp at Chibar, and he, seemed, he sees a vision of God. Now, coincidentally, it was his 30th birthday, a day he would have been ordained as a priest if he'd still been living in Jerusalem. Now his vision. He sees a fiery storm cloud coming from the north, and within the cloud he sees a vision of God. He goes on to describe four strange creatures with wings outstretched touching each other. The creatures are described as having four faces, the face of a man, the face of an eagle, the face of a lion on the left and the face of an ox on the right. It has four wheels that are described as having eyes all round. They support a platform which is held aloft a throne. Ezekiel realises what he's seen and calls it the appearance and the likeness of the glory of the Lord. Now the word glory in Hebrew means kavod, heavy or significant. Biblical authors use this word to describe the physical appearance and manifestation when God appeared. My research has led me to the conclusion the Egyptians possessed a machine that relied on a stable equilibrium to operate. The principle of moment states an object is said to be in, in a stable equilibrium when the anti-clockwise moment equals the clockwise moment at the same point. Now the rocker is a critical part of this machine and I will demonstrate why. To find a stable equilibrium on a triangular pivot, it's very difficult. Even if the beam is balanced, it wants to tip to the left or tip to the right. However, using a curved fulcrum, it finds the equilibrium point easier. And the greater the curve, the easier it is to find. In the first setup, the beam was in the middle and rested on top of the arch fulcrum. In this setup, the fulcrum is at the bottom and the beam is slightly offset along this side. Now you can still achieve equilibrium and compensate for the weight of the beam by moving the load. And this can be described as a state of balance because when disturbed, it returns to equilibrium. Using the artifacts from the foundation deposits and Ezekiel's description, I've come up with this machine. It's constructed using two rockers, here and here and here. Attached to the rockers is a circular platform with extended wings. An identical platform is placed on top, and sandwiched between these two platforms is a circular bank, bank of tapered rollers. Now, because my model is, model is dramatically uh, scaled down, I've used metal rollers, 
they are encapsulated in, in these small cages. So that, that's inside there. The machine operates by lifting one rocker off the floor and moving forward, and then lifting the other rocker off the floor and moving forward again. Now we can't do this on its own. It needs a weight on the, on the machine itself to compensate for the weight of the machine. Now this statue's center of mass or center of gravity is on this round, round about this point on this line. But to get the machine in equilibrium, you need to put the compensate for the weight of the machine, which is somewhere around about there, I think. So the weight, so the machine is now in, in, in equilibrium really. When disturbed, it goes back to its resting point. And it's at this point you can move the assemblage forward. Then by rotating the model around, the weight is transferred to this side of the rocker. This rocker is lifted off the floor and then you can swivel it and move it that way. And the process is repeated. Now the feet, the feet are kept in position with the tensioning rope that holds, holds the foot in, in position through, through there and comes out to the top so you can tension up these feet so they become tighter. Now that's important to stop and to, to keep the sensor of gravity within the base of the feet. Other than if, if it didn't, it would tend to tip over as I'll explain later. In Ezekiel's commentary, he mentions the feet sparkled with burnished brass. So I've placed a, a brass sheet in between the feet and the rocker. I assume this is to prevent wear between the rocker and the foot. Ezekiel describes four strange creatures with four faces, with wheels intersecting wheels. Now you could interpret these uh, rockers as wheels with the uh, Lazy Susan type of table on the top as a wheel as, as well, a wheel intersecting a wheel. Now scholars have discussed the, uh, the four faces and inter interpreted them in many ways. However, I've given it a lot of thoughts and concluded Ezekiel describing, uh, describing orientation. Now that's because he mentions left and right. I think Ezekiel is, des is describing the face of a man using the ox to the left and the lion to the right as an eye or eyes, assuming the eagle would be in the middle, uh, used for the nose. To communicate with the workers and orientate them, uh, to work, make them work in union as a team, they would need a point of reference. Now you'd have men running around turning this mechanism left and right, up and down, and if this figure on the top was uh, also moving, um, and somebody shouted move to the left or move to the right, you'd probably be lost. So to place, um, uh, make a face using a lion and an ox and an eagle would make a lot of sense. Ezekiel's vision of the four living creature, creatures in Ezekiel chapter 1. They are identified as cherubim later on in chapter 10 and, and, and are described as God's throne bearers. Also associated with cherubim are seraphim. However, unlike cherubim, seraphim have six wings to fly. You could say that cherubim is a heavy duty holier because the load is supported directly over the rocker. The seraphim um, alternates the equilibrium by rotating the load by rotating the load on the wing. So this is a seraphim. Um, I'll insert a clip now of this seraphim and how it works. Just like the cherubim, the seraphim rotates the load to um, alternate the equilibrium. The, the strings uh, tied to the front of the feet are there just to keep the feet pointing in the right direction. Um, there's weights that's dangling over the table. Um, it's, I haven't got four hands, so that's why I use the, the weights. You can see it's very stable as you turn the weights around. There's only a little friction forces.
Just how I worked all this out is a long story, but I hope you'll stay with me and listen to it. I gave a lecture or a talk to my local Egyptology society, and I think the best way to tell the story is to tell um, the lecture I gave to them. <laughs>